Hey, APCALC BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our example five, which is going to be our fourth motion along a curve problem. They're so fun, we just have to do as many as we possibly can. And, and you can tell my Bitmoji's kind of in a convulsive state that he's so excited about taking a look at another motion problem. So let's do that. Let's take a look at our example number five. As you can see in the problem, we have a particle with an initial velocity i plus j an initial position 1 1 that has an acceleration vector given as negative cosine t i plus sine t j our job is to find the location of the particle at t equal pi and basically the point of this video is just to reiterate the procedures that you would use to move from an acceleration or velocity type of vector to your position. And it's going to be very similar to some of the things that we've done in the previous problems. And the, the whole purpose of this video is just to give more reinforcement. If you didn't understand how we did this, say, in example three, this is a good problem to take a look at. So the way that you want to attack this is you're very likely going to want to start thinking about what do I need to do to move from the acceleration to the velocity? And the answer to that question is to integrate. We know that the integration of acceleration is going to give us this velocity. So let's make that happen. When we integrate, I'll just go ahead and write it up on the same line. How's that? So when we integrate negative cosine, be very careful. We're integrating a letter, a word that starts with the letter C, so our answer is going to be the same sign. It's going to be positive. However, there's already a negative there that's going to drop straight down. Don't forget, you always have constants when you perform an indefinite integral. There is our x component, or you could say i component. And when we do the same thing, when we integrate the sign, we are going to have a negative cosine for that particular value. There's your C2, your other constant of integration, and then, of course, multiplied by your J. Now, at this point, we use this idea of initial velocity. That means at time zero, you can't get much more initial than when you're at time zero, we can plug in zero to all of these values. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on the fly here. In other words, negative sine of zero is going to be zero plus your C1. And then negative cosine of zero is actually negative one plus your C2. And what we know about this initial velocity is that, make that look more like a zero, is that we get i plus j. So it's not like this is a particle at rest. I think that's what you saw in a previous example where we would use the 0i plus 0j vector here. We actually have 1i plus 1j. And it's not going to be very difficult to figure out what your c1 and c2 are. c1 has to be 1 and negative 1 plus c2 has to be equivalent to 1 which forces c2 to actually be 2. And so now you have an official velocity vector. Your velocity vector would be negative sine of t plus 1 times i, of course. And then I'm going to keep the plus in the middle. Um, a lot of my students have told me that they prefer that we keep this always as a plus. And if the j component happens to have a, a negative value, uh, with with one or you know more of the pieces, we could insert those negatives as we see fit, and I am going to abide by that. All right, so now we're ready to move on to our position. Normally we use the letter R for position. It really probably wouldn't make a big difference if you used S of T uh, in in uh, in that regard. So we're going to have the integration of V as our position. And if we pull this off, integrating sine is going to give us negative cosine. That negative is going to take over. And we have a, we actually have a positive cosine of t. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to t is t. And then we have a third constant on the scene we'll call c3. 
We do the same thing over here. The antiderivative of negative cosine would be negative sine of t plus your 2t plus another constant we'll call 4 here times rj. Now we use the idea that we have an initial position of 1, 1. Well, that's going to look awfully familiar to what we just did. We use the time of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, plus t is 0, plus our c3, all multiplied by vector i, plus, do the same thing here, let t be 0. Everything pretty much wipes out except for that c4 times j. And if our initial position is 1, 1, we've talked about how you can still use the idea of a vector for that, right? The point 1, 1 can still be described by uh, this vector i plus j, since that is the tip of that vector. The tip of the vector i plus j actually points right to that ordered pair of that position. So what that means is C3, or at least 1 plus C3 is 1. So that means that C3 is, of course, 0. And then all of the C4 has to be equivalent to the 1 that's in front. So what that all says is that our vector for position, RT, is cosine T plus T plus 0, which I don't really feel the need to write plus negative sine t plus 2t plus 1 times rj. And at this point, we can answer our question. Find the location of the particle at time t equal pi. So if we let the t equal pi, and we work through this, cosine of pi is negative 1. We replace the t with pi. We do the same thing over here. Negative sine of pi, that would be 0. 2 times pi, of course, is 2 pi. Add our 1. And then you essentially have your answer. It is perfectly acceptable to leave it like that. Or if you want to give it an ordered pair, it would take on this look here. And I assure you that if you wanted to move on to your graphing calculator, and let's say that you sketch r of t, which you would do so using your parametric equation feature, you could trace through that graph and find out what ordered pair you are sitting on as the t is equal to pi. And you would find that it's going to be a little bit larger than 2, which is what negative 1 plus pi is. and then Oh, about seven and a quarter, which is what two pi plus one is going to be. You can check that out if you'd like. Anyway, I hope this is starting to make a lot more sense as you are moving deeper into our topic 9.6. We don't have a lot more to show you. I think three more examples of some applications of motion in the real world, and that will pretty much finish up our entire discussion of vectors. Anyway, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.